Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm talking about the Ethereum hard fork that's coming up very soon. So the Ethereum network's changing, and I'm gonna explain all of those changes in this video and answer all of your questions. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. So the Ethereum network's changing, and it's actually forking. So this is called the Constantinople hard fork, and it's gonna happen very soon. So I'm gonna answer a lot of questions about this in this video. So the first question is, what is a hard fork? You know, like, what does that even mean if you don't know? When is it going to happen? What does that mean for the network moving forward? And like, what does that mean for you as a blockchain developer? Like, what if you have code already on the network? Is all your code gonna break? Do you have to rewrite everything and push it all out there again? So I'm gonna answer all those questions in this video. So first, what is a hard fork? Well, a hard fork in this case basically is just a network upgrade. So you know, the Ethereum is a blockchain network and it has to be upgraded and that's what's happening right now. And so sometimes people think hard fork, they think, you know, a fork, like a split in the road. And I don't think that's going to happen in this case because this is such an incremental upgrade where there's probably not going to be a lot of disagreement. So sometimes people think that they think, you know, oh, the blockchain's forking, you know, Ethereum's going to split into two cryptocurrencies. Like you've seen Ethereum Classic, you've seen Ethereum, you've seen this happen with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, where people disagree on how the network should be run and it splits off into two different networks, two different blockchains that now have new cryptocurrencies associated with each of them. That's probably not going to happen with the Constantinople hard fork. And here's why. It's, it's a pretty agreeable network upgrade, and I think that you're not gonna see a lot of resistance in order for that to happen. So, when is this hard fork going to happen? Well, we don't know the exact time, but we know the block number. That's how they decide these things. So the block number is, I'm gonna get this right, 7,080,000. So what does that mean and how do we know that? So if you look on a website like Etherscan, we can see what that means. So you'll see this big number up here in the top corner. That's the block number, right? So the blockchain is made up of bundles of records called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. And each of these blocks has a number that they can be identified with. And that's how we actually talk about the history of the blockchain. You can look in the past to see all the blocks that have the transactions. And we also talk about the future in terms of the block number that we know if the network keeps getting used, you know, this particular block is going to, we're gonna reach it eventually, block 7,080,000. And that's the point at which the network's gonna fork. You know, that's part of the value of the blockchain is we have this big ledger. We can count it in the past, we can count the future. And at that point in the future, that's when the network is going to change at block 7,080,000. So you can play around with Etherscan if you want to and watch the blocks change, um, but that's, when it's going to happen and you know judging by the current block time and you know how uh how much the network's being used right now and things like that we're kind of just forecasting a date of middle of january 2019 for this upgrade to happen that's when we think that we'll actually reach block 7 million 80 000. so what does this mean for the network you know, what is actually gonna change? Well, there's five big changes and I'll kind of go over them. Um, the ones that I think are the most interesting and we'll kind of just go from there. We'll see how far we get. So we can actually read through the changes um, on the Ethereum Improvement Proposals Repository. So I'll just start with the one that seems the most interesting to me. Um, this is EIP 1014. I'll actually pull this up on my screen here. So this solution is put forward by Vitalik himself. This is EIP 1014. Um, so basically what this does is it makes it easier for you to do off-chain transactions. So what does that mean? What is off-chain? So I've got some other videos that explain this, but basically here's the gist. You know, Ethereum is a blockchain we call it like a layer one solution where it's a settlement layer where all the, it's the final source of truth where you know, we know this data is you know, unchanged and we trust this. So there's layer two on top of that, where there's lots of things we can put on layer two, like side chains or state channels and things like that. So a state channel is basically a two-way channel that you can open up between people that allow for you to make uh, trustless you know, communication back and forth in a closed system. And the eventual result of those kinds of things gets settled in the blockchain. 
And that's what uh, EIP 1014 does, is it makes it easier to use those kinds of things. So you can actually see here in the uh, repository, it says it allows interactions to actually or counterfactually in channels be made with addresses that do not exist yet on chain, but can be relied upon. So basically what that means is like actually versus counterfactually. Um, so actually it would be, you know, transactions on the chain itself and counterfactually would be basically well, something that hasn't happened yet in an off-chain channel. So it's going to facilitate those kinds of things. It's going to make it faster, more efficient, things like that. So the next change in the network that I want to talk about is uh, EIP-1234. Basically what this does is it reduces the block reward from 3 Ether down to 2. So what does that mean? So, you know, Ethereum is a proof of work blockchain right now. It's a proof of work consensus model where, you know, you receive reward from mining blocks, you know, the big bundles of records on the blockchain. And the reward for mining an entire block is three. And with this change, it's going to turn it down to two. So that's going to have some effects on, you know, the economics of the network in the long run. So the next uh, big you know, update that I'm kind of thinking about is uh, EIP 1054. So what does this do? Um, this basically, it allows you to communicate uh, at a very low level uh, of smart contracts with a hash representation of a smart contract. So this is really a performance boost. So instead of always needing to basically have the byte code of a smart contract or to use it and like identify with it, you don't always need that for every operation and you can basically get a hash representation of it. And it's basically going to be an efficiency upgrade. So the next thing is EIP um, 145. And this is a pretty low level improvement. And so what does it do? So what it does is it's, it implements bitwise shifting to the EVM, which is something the EVM didn't have yet. So what does that mean? So EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine. It's basically what allows you to run smart contracts on an Ethereum node. And bitwise shifting is something they didn't have yet. It's basically a feature of a lot of uh, uh, you know, machines like this that are mo most already have, and this didn't have it yet. And so now it's being implemented in this proposal. And what it does is this is basically going to be, it adds efficiency to the Ethereum virtual machine at a, from a very low level. It also is going to improve the Solidity compiler. And ultimately, this is going to improve the Solidity programming language to make it more efficient. Uh, it'll be, you'll be able to uh, create operations more efficiently with smart contracts in the Solidity programming language. And ultimately, that's going to turn into gas savings for your users. So if you're building a DAP, that's beneficial. Um, so yeah, those are there's there's five EIPs. Those are the four that jump out to me that I kind of want to talk about. So let's go to the next thing, which is what does that mean for you as a blockchain developer? Well, I want to answer the first question, which a lot of you probably have, which is is all my code going to break? You know, with this network change that's coming on. Uh, and they push stuff out of the network. I've got smart contracts on the network. I've got users on my DAP. Is everything just gonna fall apart? <laughs> and the answer is probably not. <laughs> so uh, this is a pretty incremental upgrade to the network. This is not a massive change. Your smart contracts are probably gonna work as expected. So that being said, We'll certainly need to wait for this to happen to see if anything unexpected happens. Um, but I don't think you have anything to worry about. So what else does this network upgrade mean for you as a blockchain developer? Well, it means a couple of things, and I think it's going to be a good thing. I mean, it's an improvement to the network. So one thing is, I just mentioned a minute ago, you'll save on gas. So whenever your users are you know, interacting with your smart contract, it'll be cheaper. And that'll be something that'll incentivize them to you know, use the network and use your code. Or if you're paying for their gas fees, it's going to save you money in the long run because it's less overhead for you as a DAP operator. And another big improvement to the network is going to be more efficient use of state channels in your DAP. And that's something that I think is actually going to catch on a lot more. I think we're going to see more DAPs using state channels. We've got some big DAPs in production right now using state channels that are making um, them much more user friendly. They're making the blockchain applications you know, much more usable, ready for mass adoption and things like that. And it's a big uh, bump in the network to make that more efficient so we can you know, have more real people using DAPs. 
So if y'all found that interesting, I also wanna know what you think about the network upgrade. Be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below if there's anything I missed or there's something that you wanna share about the uh, Constantinople hard fork that's coming up at block 7,080,000 in the middle of January in 2019. So again, hope you all liked that video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. It really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.